and say, we've had 12 hours of prayer. Yeah. You guys have already heard we had 12 hours of prayer from 6 a.m. till 6 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Yeah. And uh, if, you, if you're online and you've been praying at home and the Lord's given you a scripture or, or something, something that he spoke to you today, then put it in the chat on YouTube and we'll see it. And then we'll get an opportunity to, to pray that out at the same point. So we have, we have three watches. We have six to 10, and that's over, Larry Bingman oversees the six to 10, and then 10 to two, and that's Pastor Steve's watch, and then two to six is Becky Ferris's watch. And uh, today I got the, the privilege of taking the, the 10 to two, because Pastor Steve has got family came into town, so he was going to the airport to pick up family. So. And he hasn't figured out how to be in two places at the same time. So, yeah, but there'll, there'll be a day, right? There'll be a day. I know that sounds crazy, but it, right? If Stephen was, you know, he baptizes someone and then boom, he's, I don't know how many miles away he was, but it was far enough that it was, you know, he didn't, he didn't, he had to give up his frequent flyer miles on that one, so. So I want to start with, with, with Larry's going to come up and share, and then anybody from that, from your, Larry, from your watch, yeah. would be glad to have him come up, like Mac or, or uh, Larry Hicks. Larry Hicks was on, he spanned a lot of it today, so I don't know where he'll come up. But go ahead, Larry, why don't you start? Once I get you up. Now they'll oh. have you. Yeah. Once I get out of bed, get my shower, and get here, I really enjoy it. Thank you, Jesus. And I always have a statement I make to myself. This is my statement this morning. The secret place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And we know that Psalm 91, and people do that for protection and for healing. There's another aspect of that. The shadow of the Almighty is the shadow of Jesus himself. And that is such an intimacy with Christ. And this morning, and you will see as I talk about what took place, that Jesus was very present in our midst this morning. And then Brother West came, Brother West Crosby, our psalmist, and he sang uh, one, Psalm 150 and Psalm 103, and that blessed us, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And then the Spirit of God began to hover over us. And Wes played 2 Corinthians 5.21. I first quoted it, and he I didn't realize he had a song, and that is this. God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If you think about that, long enough. That is an amazing declaration of the sacrifice and the love and the glory of Jesus himself. So Wes began to play that, and Mac and I are just there quietly praying in the Spirit. Wow! And the Spirit of God got heavier and heavier. Then he switched the other part of the song where any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All the old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And the Spirit got heavier and heavier. And I was going, I love this. I love this. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for your presence. And then, because of the atmosphere, I said, we're holy and blameless. 
before you, Father. Love, that's Ephesians 1, 4. And this is all precipitating a move of God in this sanctuary. Right there, there's three of us right there. And then Wes played Galatians 3, 20. I've been crucified with Christ, but nevertheless I live, but not I, but Christ that lives within me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. And then the Spirit goes plump upon us. I'm going, oh, we worship you, Jesus. We praise you. We glorify your name. In the midst of this, Mac has a vision. I want him to share that with you. Well, the scriptures tell, tell us that Jesus would, you know, often get up early in the morning and go pray. And I think that's why often it's so glorious here early in the morning because Jesus is here. So even though it's nice to have just a small group, we'd really invite all of you. <laughs> but this morning, you know, Larry is probably currently the, the most graphic of seeing Jesus here and there. And so he, he has told me not to come before six, don't, because he wants his 10 minutes to, to dwell with the Lord. So obediently I show up. And, Thank you, bro. <laughs> but he's still in this gardens and Jesus and, you know, all these really spiritual spooky things. But when West then comes a minstrel, you know, it just brings the glory and the glory. And so as we were there, as Wes was playing those songs that Larry related, it just felt, and I think really Larry first said it, I see Jesus standing like, like I was here and he was there and Wes was here and right in the midst of us. And he said, I think he said, I, I see him standing like with his hands. And then as I looked to see, I really saw Jesus, no, not like this, but with his hand down on Wes's head, just anointing him with, you know, the beautiful minstrels. And then as I looked out, you know, you know the paintings, I'm sure most everybody's seen these paintings where it's like in heaven and there's millions of angels or millions of people. What I saw was right where Jesus stood, there was first 10, 20, 30, and the clumps of people went out through the doors into the heavenlies. And all, I saw one of those kind of images of, of hundreds or thousands of worshiping. And so we just had a really good time. Jesus. It was so touching. That lasted about to a quarter to eight. And, uh, and then Wes began to play Psalm 24, which is the King of Glory. We began to worship Jesus, the King of Glory. And uh, then our prayer got very serious towards that, the nation begin to pray and declare that Jesus send out laborers, more laborers. We quoted uh, Matthew 9, where Jesus says, move with compassion when he sees the multitudes, the like sheep without a shepherd. And he says, pray the Lord of the harvest. That's him. He really said, pray to me, but he said, pray the Lord of the harvest. They would send out laborers into the harvest, for the harvest is huge, but the laborers are few. And that follows John 4, where Jesus said, open your eyes, take a look at the harvest, for it is white 
and the harvest. Let me explain. I never knew what and the harvest until I saw the movie Nativity. And it's a story about the nativity of Jesus. But in that story, there's a harvest scene, and the chaff from the harvest begins to blow in the wind, and it's a white chaff, and that's the sign that the harvest is white. Well, that's right out of the scriptures. I said, now I understand. Jesus sees by faith the whiteness of the harvest blowing all across the world. And he says, go out. And if you reap, you receive wages, and you gather fruit unto eternal life. So we prayed for the harvest into the Middle East, prayed the harvest into America. We prayed the harvest into Asia and Africa, and many places all across the world. And then Brother Larry comes in. I'll let him share what uh, he talked talk about. Yeah. Outrageous. Wait. We're not the early birds. About five of us came in after eight. <laughs> and uh, it took a little different turn. And we prayed over a bunch of things. So I'll just pick one that, that I particularly like. We were discussing uh, Pastor Steve's sermon uh, on Sunday um, about even though things are happening, in the country and in, in our society that we don't like, as a matter of fact, very irritating to our souls, um, how we have to evaluate it from our spirits, from the kingdom of God, and trusting God, what he is doing, and that it's all working for the good of what he is doing. And it's a whole different um, uh, dynamic when, when you look at it this way. That way, and we're discussing that quite a bit. And and one verse that I particularly liked was uh, one dollar, one dollar store <laughs> readers. Um, in verse twelve, of chapter one of Philippians, Paul says, "But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, so that it has become evident." to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident of by my chains, much more bold to speak the word without fear. And he, of course, was sentenced to be executed, which, which he was. And how the Lord used that, and it's the same thing that I think was a very strong parallel to the idea we were just discussing about when things look this way in the world, that that way in the kingdom of God. Um, and then in the second session, I, I stayed over. I usually stayed till 12, but it was real good, so I stayed till 1. <laughs> stayed an extra hour. Cause I, and uh, we, we went through this again you know, discussing Pastor Steve's sermon because there are different people and they had some different, different ideas um, to share. And uh, it, was, it was along, along the, the same line. I'm trying to think of the other point now. Old age. <laughs> oh, man, it was good, too. And there, there was something else... Uh, that we share. Anyway, we, oh, I know what it was. It was evangelism. Of course, Wes was there, so <laughs> he, 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 he held his own in that, in that, and I was there, and several people, and Richard Snyder, and, and you know, that a, a interest, really interested in evangelism. And we started discussing that and how, what the Lord's doing in the church to raise up people, to get the church out into the streets, out into the world, outside, and doing much more than what we're doing now. And we decided that the Lord is going to do it, and we're, we're going to see it. And so that took quite a bit of time, and there were many other things, but uh, I'll just leave with that one point. Oh, Isaiah, in Isaiah 6, verse 8, um, Isaiah says, here I am, Lord, send me. And that was a big verse because um, 
Richard Walden said, well, we've got to follow the Holy Spirit in this, you know, and, and do what the Lord shows us to do, which we all agreed. But then we pointed out that the willingness to do it is up to us, is our responsibility. He's got the plan. <laughs> He's got the power. But the willingness has to come with him. And that's where Isaiah 6, 8 came from. That's it. Okay, pray, pray that, Larry. Release oh, yes, that over pray. everybody. Yeah. And then you too, Larry. Don't run off. Lord, <laughs> Lord we, we, we pray on, for that spirit that we are in something that's maybe, probably will be the finest days of our lives. The church's finest hour is, is coming and that we concentrate on that, Lord, and help us to do that. Help us to be jubilant and positive and not pull down, like, like Chris said, not take Satan's bait to get angry. That's, his, that's, what, that's what he does in his kingdom, and he wants to take us there. The Lord wants us to, to, to see what he's doing. So help us to make the correct decision as to what we're going to obey. And we give you praise for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And Lord, we declare, because of your sweet presence, and the power that's in your spirit as we go forth sent out by the spirit of God being sent forth to our neighbors to our city to our county to our nation across the world we're going forth as it says the last verse in Mark 16 and they went everywhere preaching the gospel and the Lord working with them with signs, wonders, and miracles, even according to his will. So we go forth with the power and the glory and the love of Jesus to do your work. Send us out, Lord. We go forth. We, we have desire. And now send us out in the name of Jesus. We declare we're going forth. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Then, from that point, when then we came to the next watch, and I'll just share from me, and then I'll have some of those other ones, Wes and Kathy and Chris, come up and share, and anybody else who was in that 10 to 2 can come up. But there was a point when we were praying, and that we were, we were just asking God, or, you know, just coming to a place of, of submission before him. And I heard the Lord say to me at that point, I heard him, so I was just, you know, about, he said, he said, you're, you're, you're no longer a debtor. And so I said, okay, God, well, where, where, where would you like me to go with that? You know, because I, I appreciate that, <laughs> agree with it. In Jesus, we're, none of us are debtors. Right, we're complete. If you're inside of Christ, then you're, then then everything that He is, you you're in completion, in that place. So, He brought me to um, Romans eight, verse twelve. It says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, not to live according to the flesh. For if we live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live according to the Spirit, you will put to death the deeds of the body, and you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. For the Spirit himself bears witness with, a, with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, then joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So just from that point, that, that debtorship, that place of no longer being a debtor, then the Lord started to speak to me about, about that, we're not debtors, we're sons. 
that each of us are sons, right? And so, and then the image that came to me was, was, was both the prodigal son and the elder brother. Both were sons of the father. Both of them had their own issues, right? But to the father, there was no, the, the issue wasn't the issue. He still came. He came to the son, right, to the prodigal son. He ran to him and reestablished his identity, rebrought him back into the family. When the elder brother got all, you know, upset and was going to stay outside and didn't want to be apart, again, the father came to the son. He came to him in that. And he established again. So if sonship, then, then you become an heir. And then if an heir, you're a joint heir. So the Lord was just impressing on me that each of us today have the opportunity, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release that. You have the opportunity to, again, we've all, we're, if we're in Christ, right, we are a son. The Spirit bears witness, and we, we cry out, Abba, Father. But like the prodigal son and like the elder brother, every once in a while, we need to, again, have a fresh understanding of the Father's love being poured out into us and over us by the Spirit so that we can receive again and hold that place of sonship. Because the enemy is going to do everything he can to, to make you not believe that you're a son. Because if you're not a son, you're not an heir. And if you're not an heir, you're not a joint heir. And if you're not a joint heir, then you're not being glorified. Right? So, so I, that was just a place for me that I was like, okay, God, then, then today I want to receive a fresh and a new. So if you want to receive today the, that, that, again, that filling of the Spirit that then cries out, Abba, Father, then just come into a place to receive. And Father, we just thank you. I thank you, Father, that, that, that sonship is something that comes by the Spirit. And so right now we receive the Spirit that testifies to us, to our spirit, that we are sons. Sons and daughters of the Most High. And so if we're a son, if we're a daughter, then you've granted unto each of us today to, again, to, be, to, to have the ability to cry out to you and call you Father. And then with that, the Spirit bears witness with us. So we receive the witness of the Spirit that we are sons, we are daughters. And that from that, because we're a son, then we're an heir. And so I thank you that you've made each of us heirs to the kingdom. You've made each of us co-heirs with Jesus. So everything that Jesus has, everything that Jesus has done, the whole completeness of the work that established on Calvary and the completeness of Jesus being the high priest, seated in majesty, next to Father, in glory, in, in completeness, then we receive that too. And we receive that place of, of being complete and whole in the midst of our earth walk. We have a place that we are whole and complete. So we receive that today. We receive that sonship, the filling of the spirit, the completion of the of the, 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 the air and the joint air and the glorification in Jesus' name. So, so, Wes, why don't you come up? We'll have Wes and then we can have uh, Chris will come up. Whoever. We'll, we'll see who comes up. Everybody can come up. We got lots of people. Hey, Jubilee. Hey, uh, Wes. So today we were talking about ascending and coming into a high place in Christ to come over our circumstances. And out of Psalm 24, 3, it says, Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. And in Psalm 149, it gives us a better picture of just clean hands that we could have actually a sharp two-edged sword in our hands and, and we could actually do harm to darkness while we're ascending the hill of the Lord. So I'm going to read Psalm 149 and then we're going to uh, release this because it's a big deal to stand in his holy place, but it's also a big deal to destroy the works of darkness. So um, for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of 
of the devil. So there's something about ascending into him so that we can destroy the works of darkness. So Psalm 149, it says, sing, or it says, starts out, praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the assembly of saints. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name with the dance. Let them sing praises to him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praise of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. So stand up with me if you want to see uh, God enthroned, dealing directly with our spiritual enemies. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Oh, we give you glory. We give you glory that you are a king looking for a seat to sit down in. You're enthroned at the right hand of the Father, but how much more you want to be enthroned in the heart of everyone that's a member of your body. How much more do you want to sit down on your body as the head and begin to rule and reign and cause your body to put out their hands and cause a two-edged sword to manifest from their hands as they're enthroning you in their praise to break down walls of division to destroy all schisms and divisions and things that separate those that are veiled from you we give you glory that we are those that get to execute judgment on darkness as we ascend the hill of the Lord as we come into your holy place as we offer our hands and our bodies as a living sacrifice and you take this temple and you manifest your glory glory through it. And we know that there is no flesh that can glory in your presence. There is nothing of darkness that can glory where you are. So we give you glory that you have called us to be with you where you are, to come into the glory that you had with Father before the world was. And we come into agreement with your cry that not only did you want to be re-glorified and brought back to what you had with Father before the world was, but you wanted many sons and daughters to join you at that seat of fellowship, at the table of fellowship, at that place of rulership, in that throne of grace where we have obtained mercy and grace has come to help in time of need. So we thank you, Holy Spirit, right now for causing us to be excited again, causing us to be passionate again, causing us to come alive with prayer and hymns like Paul and Silas, even in the midst of our cuffs, even in the midst of our chains, even in the midst of the cells, even in the midst of the pain, even in the midst of the whips and the wounds and all the things that have gone on, we thank you that this prayer is ascending before you. These hymns, these high praise notes, these notes of high prayer where we're glorifying you, where we're making you the magnanimous God that you are. And out of that place of magnifying you, we're going to watch cell doors break open. We're going to watch chains and cuffs fall off. We're going to watch those that were chained and cuffed near us come into that place of freedom and liberty. Oh, we thank you for high praise breaking a people out of a daze and the dismal ways of being about uh, the ground battle and the ground warfare. And we thank you for high praise that brings us into that high place that causes ambushes to get sent against the enemy where the enemy turns on himself and he takes himself out and we rule and reign, and we displace the powers of darkness and replace them as sons of light, and we walk in the light as you are in the light, and we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus. Kathy.
As, as Wes was um, reading Psalm 149, uh, my memory actually started working about 10 years ago, 15 years ago. We were in Jerusalem, and we were singing the high praises of God. There are probably about 25 of us in a room with a huge, big chandelier at the top. And um, Rick Ridings was conducting the worship time. And he's looking up, worshiping, and his eyes sort of open, and he sees the chandelier going like this. And we were, we were in serious warfare and worship simultaneously, and we were singing about how the high praises of God will bring the stronghold to the enemy down. So, so this chandelier is going like this, and Rick goes, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we're having an earthquake. And sure enough, we were having an earthquake. And, you know, when you're in the midst of it, you really don't know what the effects are going to be, but, but we knew that God was doing something. And within a couple hours, we discovered that in the Knesset, which is the, the building that holds the governing body of Israel, uh, over one of the main entry doors, the lint, lintel, lintel, the cross, cr you know, it didn't completely fall down, but it, it came down, and it was like a real sign of the answer to the, to the cry of our hearts that particular day. And God was doing a thing, and he was bringing correction where things weren't quite the way they should have been in the government over there. So just that's all I can say right now. Okay, great. Chris? Hmm? Didn't know I should make notes. <laughs> should always make notes. <laughs> oh, God is so gracious, and I'm so thankful. I was just telling Pastor Brian, I said, I didn't know I was supposed to make notes this today. I, we just, when the Lord puts a scripture on your heart, you find it and read it and give it back to him because it's his word. But the, the mornings are always intriguing when we're here because the Lord will give a little bit to one person and then it ignites something in somebody else's heart and then they speak it out and then it gives something to somebody else and it's this beautiful picture that is painted of his glory and his love for each and every one of us. But we were, like Wes was saying, it was a time of praising God but it was also a time of equipping. Uh, he has said it very well very regally. Um, it was a time of recognition of, of knowing that things are difficult right now, and more so in everyone's life, and we're on unstable ground. But en the enemy does want to keep us unstable, but in Jesus, we're stable. And that's where we find our... Uh, don't touch this thing. In uh, Proverbs 14, 27, says, the reverent fear of the Lord that leads to obedience and worship is the fountain of life. And it is, as we, as we pray, each one of us, you get filled up with so much more of his living water, and it's beautiful. And it pours out on each other, so we all are blessed. Then it goes on, it says, so, so that one may avoid the snares of death. In the multitude of people, it is the king's glory. But in the lack of people, the pretense of the king, he who is slow to anger has great understanding. But he who is quick-tempered exposes and exalts his foolishness. But, but God, <laughs> you know I love that saying, a calm and peaceful and tranquil heart is life and health to the body. And envy has no place in any of us. No jealousy. No, no, no. <laughs> we, we dig our, our heels into Jesus. We wrap his arms of love around us. We hang on tight when the times get tough. And we cry out and say, Daddy, I need your help to make it through the snares, the lies, the situations, whatever. And the funny thing is, he listens. And he cares. And he pours himself into us, each and every one, whether it's home and here when we all pray together, we all learn so much more because, it, like I say, it's a beautiful picture that's being painted of his incredible love and protection over us that we do. We see his arms of love around each and every one being brought to life and not death, giving hope instead of depression, giving glory because it's all his.
Release that, Chris. Pray it. Release it out. Father, I thank you that you are everything. You are everything we need. You are everything we hope for. And, and, and it was said uh, this morning is that you took Abraham out and to look at the stars because you told him he was going to have more descendants than the stars. Well, you have more gifts, more revelation, more love than the stars, more than the sands. And you desire to pour it out on each and every one of us, equip us with it, fill us with it, so we can pour it out onto others. So, Lord, I thank you that when we look at those stars, we say, God, I don't understand. But you said, and you don't lie. So we say, yes, Lord, unto us, whatever happens, as long as you're with us, we go forth. And you pour your love through each and every one of us. So we thank you and honor you in everything that we say and do. Our precious Father, amen. 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 Becky, do you want to come up and do you have, do you want others to come or you just? <laughs> I know you do. I know. Okay, you guys, everybody who is here, come on up. <laughs> Delilah and Deborah. Yeah, I want everybody to come up, but if you were here during between two and six, please come up. Delilah, I'd like you to start. One of the things that we did, which come over here, babe. One of the things that we did was each one of us, and there were more, but they're not here. So I'm going to ask Pastor Brian, you stand in for Allie, please. She <laughs> gave away a pastoral love for people. You got, got that, so you can, you can do that. Um, one of the things that, that we did was we identified where we were and what God had given us, and we wanted to give it to the whole body of Christ. So, so we did individually give, give away what God has given us. We had spent the time, this was towards the end, we had spent the time getting really honest before God and not caring about our reputation or anything else. Uh, and it was probably one of the, my most favorite times in prayer that I've had in a long time where everybody was just an open book. There was no judgment. There was no anything. And it was so beautiful that the Spirit of God came with such power that I was just automatically holding my hands like that. I wasn't really thinking about holding my hands out. They just went out. I literally felt, I think somebody said about the weight of God. I literally felt the weight of God getting stronger and stronger on my hands to where they were starting to go down. I said, oh my gosh, the weightiness of the Lord is in this place. And he's going to come right now because we prayed it in for right now for this service for those watching for for those in this church who aren't watching we just prayed it in for everybody and um we started praying and delilah started talking about how everybody was praying what she had prayed in her heart and it touched her and i, and I felt like that was a sign from the lord that he hears you he hears you when you cry out to him. He hears your prayers. He knows even when you don't articulate it, but it's in there. He hears it and he answers. Um, well, it was really interesting, like hearing all the, the prior sessions, because you'll hear a thing or two. And then when you hear everybody else speak, it's like, oh, man, it all kind of goes together. I was... Um, I was reading Isaiah 41, I believe, and it talked about um, how God says that I have chosen you and that um, he says you are his servants and that we are descendants of Abraham. And through faith in Jesus, we have all become um, children or descendants of Abraham. And then what I released was uh, anybody who feels lost or um, not in their like establishment of being a son to have their uh, their identity in Christ or something like that, right? So what's really interesting is how Brian is talking about sonship. I didn't get that. I wasn't here for that. And how it's all about being established. So I just thought it was really beautiful and how um, 
I kept hearing, I heard like Diana and Becky a couple times say really significant words that I use in my personal prayer time, I mean, for years now. And I just kept laughing. I was like, oh my gosh, how is that possible that those specific little detail things are coming out in this prayer? And Becky was saying, it's because we're like all in this jar. And if we're in Christ, we're all hearing the same thing. So I think it's really important that we all keep sharing because it's like amazing how God establishes you and will let you know that, yeah, he's there, he's listening, and just give you confirmation that you're in the right place. Because a lot of, I don't know about anybody else, but about 99% of the time, I have no idea if I'm in the right place or if I'm established or was that right. So it just makes it really important that we all like, you know, iron sharpens iron. That was kind of going wrong in my own prayer thing. But anyway, all right, yeah. Okay, now. Pray that out. Now, you're going to start. And Diana, we need you up here because everybody needs to get what you released as well. Um, everybody here has something that they're going to release. I'm going to ask you all to stand up because you will get it. This isn't the, for those who want it. The Lord is giving gifts whether, you, whether you've asked for them or not. He's going to give you gifts that you have not had in your life that you say, Lord, I need... I want, I desire, and the Lord is about to release because he has opened up the heavens over your head, over your house, over your children, over your spouses, and he is coming today and to give you things that some of you have not even asked for, but he knows what we have need of before we ask, and he's about to release. So each one of them, we're not going to take a long time. We're just going to release what God has given to us. Well, one thing God has given me so much of, especially, oh, okay, so I just release worship and praise because that's something that God has really put in me and um, a lot of freedom and being able to see into, um, this be more connected in the spirit and to be able to see things with like a veil taken off in Jesus' name, to be able to see more into the spirit realm and to more love and passion for Jesus that they've ever known in their Christian walk. In Jesus' name, just new love and fire, because that's what he's given to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes. Um, I got to get my Bible. Sorry, Becky. <laughs> I, um, Psalms 105, um, the Lord gave, it, gave me this, and it says, Go ahead and give thanks to God yeah. for all the, glor for the glorious things he has done. Go ahead and worship him. Tell him about his wonders let sing, let's sing and praise. Sing and put all of his miracles in music. <laughs> Shine and make his joyful boast to him. And lovers of God, let's be happy and keep rejoicing in matter, no matter what. Let always be seeking the light of his face. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare and decree that we all have miracles, that we, every miracle that we, we have received, that we would put it in song and music, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you wake us up in the night season, Father God, and you stir us up, Father God, for a music instrument, um, melody, Father God, within our hearts, Father God, to worship you, to magnify you, to glorify you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. So I declare this and to all the, the congregation and also to the, to, um, to the media in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for the melody, Lord. Thank you that you're raising up worshipers. 
Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. <laughs> it's okay. Don't show them up. So I came here and I was super tired. So I showed up at what? I think it was like 10.45 and I was just wiped. No energy, didn't, didn't really sleep the best last night. So I just figured, you know, I'm just gonna come here and sleep and like pray. So I just, you know, propped myself up on the chairs over there and just slept. Cause it's like, for me, and I don't know about the rest of you guys, it's like, I just wanna be in a place where the presence of God is just like, you know, it's like a stew just sitting on top of the stove, it's just cooking up there. And it's just going through the whole house and everybody's just smelling it. And that's, that's what happens here on Wednesdays for 12 hours. It's just this flavor just ruminating through this place. And so even if you're, you're like, well, I, I'm not really into the gifts or I haven't really done spiritual things before, I just want to encourage people to show up, to come. There's no, there's no right way. There's no wrong way. This is going to sound corny. We just worship Yahweh. We worship Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And, and you show up here, you're going to encounter him. You're going to encounter him. He's going to speak something to you. He's going to talk to you. He's going to whisper in your ear. He's just going to come and like massage your heart. So I, I just, I just want to release uh, rest and health over this body. I just thank you, Father God, that you're bringing rest and health to the body of Jubilee, to the city of Camarillo, Ventura County, all the areas that uh, are affected by the message that's preached from this house. Lord, I thank you that this is a place that people can come and rest and sit in you, that they don't have to figure it out, that you've already figured it out, that all we need to do as believers is just believe, that we can come and believe and rest in you and sit in you, that you recharge us, that we don't have to go and, and go through the week and go, well, tomorrow's Thursday, and I got to just get to Friday, then I got to get to Saturday, Sunday, then back to Monday, that that will go away, that we wake up every day, and every day feels like Christmas. Every day feels like a gift because we're in you, because we're locked into covenant, and we're never going to be shaken. We're never going to be moved. And so in that place, you bring the healing. In that place, you bring the restoration. So I just release that. I just release that. I release that. I release that. And greater revelations, deeper revelations of the love of God, that when you're commuting to work, when you're going to see your kids, if you're visiting somebody in the hospital, if you're driving from church to church, back from church, could be wherever, you're on vacation, that you'll just have moments where the Lord will just speak to you, and you might break down and cry, and you might just be hanging a shirt up in the closet, and you're wondering if you're going crazy. You're not going crazy. That's the Holy Spirit loving on you, showing you how good he is, saying, look where I brought you. Look where I brought you out of, and now you're here. You're placed upon the rock. So we just thank you for these things, Lord. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Romans 12, 1 tells us that we are to present our bodies a living sacrifice. At holy, acceptable to God. And then two, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what, basically we may understand, what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And um, so I just, I, uh, I'm just gonna pray for us to, to understand the way that God is God, because we don't understand and we are disappointed because we think he should be doing something that he's just not. He's just not that way. So, and I, he's been busy changing my mind. Um, and I feel he, well, he's going to change the face of Christianity in the earth. He's going to change. I mean, if, you know, he's going to change us by his mercy. Because here it says, by God's mercy, by the mercies of God. He's going to take our body, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable, and then he's going to uh, renew our mind. And um, so, Father God, I thank you. I thank you that you're not leaving your church. You're not abandoning us, and you're not leaving us the way it was. We praise you because we don't want the way it was. And God, we know there are so much things we don't know, we don't understand about you, and we made us things about you that you're, that's not you. 
And Father God, that, that's why we are so tormented mentally. God, we don't understand why people are sick and not being healed. And Lord, that situation is not changing, although we claimed, we claim, we, we just claim, and we, we just thought we had all the faith to claim your promises, but nothing is breaking through, God, because Lord, Lord, show us the way you are God. We just ask you, God, for mercy, Lord, that you open our eyes, each one of us in our life, individual life, individual situation, God. Lord, we ask for your grace to come upon all of us and that you just open our eyes to see the way you are God. You are God, the way you are, not the way we want, the way you are. We thank you to, for coming to transform us, to change, to renew our mind, just change our mind. Just change our mind. We thank you, Lord. That's our prayer. And we follow you, Lord. We thank you that you are changing us. Do not leave us as it was. Things are accelerating the earth, God. Things are changing, Lord. Darkness is becoming darker. And Lord, but your light is becoming even brighter in the church inside of us as we come to understand, to, reconcil to the reconciliation of understanding your will. What is that perfect will of yours in our life? Not the way we thought. Not at all, Lord. And we just renounce our old ways, God. We just say, Lord, come, Lord. Have mercy on us. Change us. Today, if you will hear my voice, do not harden your heart. So, Lord, speak to us every day. Today, each day, Lord, we open our heart to hear you. We seek your face, just as many are doing today here, Lord. We seek your face I do it every day. Today, if you will hear my voice, do not harden your heart. We thank you, Lord. You are the God who speaks, and your sheep hear your voice. And we are changing in Jesus' name to the likeness of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So far, what you have been given, even if you don't uh, recognize it, is uh, a gift of being able to um, uh, express the Lord in an outward way, the gift of intercession and taking the word to a different level and, and dissecting it in ways that we haven't known before. Um, also, um, Diana has the authority to release um, uh, worship and praise. If you have had a place in your life or in your family's life Ah, gosh, I, it's so neat because I can see things on people right now. I mean, there's, there's, uh, the Lord is about to move on a family in this room right now. He's about to come and visit you in such a profound, supernatural way that you will not understand how could it go from this to that in a twinkling of an eye. And the Lord is about to do that for you just because you made a sacrifice of praise by coming into this house for him today. He's, he's meeting you right now where you are. So I just want to release the anointing of worship. Worship that comes from your belly. Fountains of living water springing forth and suddenly you're finding yourself engaged in worship with a musical instrument, with no musical instrument, just singing, waking up singing songs unto the Lord. This is not about the platform. This is about the bride of Christ regaining her voice unto her beloved. It's about every single one of us being ignited to exclaim to our God who he is, declaring our love, declaring our worship, declaring our praise, declaring our honor. And so right now in the name of Jesus, I am releasing the anointing to worship your God to worship, to exclaim, for words to come forth, for um, melodies to come forth, for rhythms to come forth, for sounds to come forth, for exclamations to come forth, where your voice is now the sole property of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Receive 
worship. Receive the anointing to worship your king. It's not about your voice. It's not about whether you're trained as a musician or a singer. It's about you singing unto your king. We release it now in the name of Jesus. Receive 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 the song of the lord in the night seasons in the early morning in the midday when you're asleep and when you're awake receive the anointing to declare worship to your god in jesus name amen and I just hold that place because i'm gonna i'm gonna release what uh becky said ali had in that, and what I heard when she told me was out of Romans uh, 5, 5. And it says, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into your heart by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So Father, right now I ask you, I ask you, Father, by the Holy Spirit to pour out into every person here, every person, every member of Jubilee, the entire body of Christ, right now that you would pour out the love of God. Pour out the love of God by the Holy Spirit into each person. Into each person. See right now, each one of you, just in your, in your, your spiritual imagination, see a pot of water over your head being poured out over you. The love of God is being poured out from the Holy Spirit to each person. It's being poured out. Receive the Holy Spirit and receive the love of God that now takes away all fear, shatters all disappointments. It takes every loss and makes it a gain. It takes every circumstance, every test, every trial, every shortcoming, and brings it to the feet of Jesus. You see the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Father, we receive right now that fresh infilling by the Holy Spirit of the love of God. The love of God. The fullness of that. We receive it. We receive it. And I agree, I agree with the word Diana had. Now take what you've heard, take that, take that love of God, and now as you start to express it back to Father, right? Because you can't, you can't be loved until you're, you can't give love until you've been given love. So now return that love by using your words, by take your words and express the, your gratitude back to the Father. See, that's your song. That's the place. What you receive, you now turn back and you give back to him and you give it first in gratitude and, and then that gratitude then becomes that, that, that testimony, that place of, of, uh, of the, the confession of hope that you've received. So Father, we thank you. I thank you, Father, for the love of God being poured out in my heart. I thank you for all fear and all loss and all, all, all torment being, being covered and being, because perfect love covers all of it, Lord. It displaces it. So I receive from you that fullness of the love of God that displaces all funky thoughts, all loss. It takes all of it and brings it back under and inside of Jesus Christ. Not because of anything we've done, not because of anything that we're going to do, but because we're inside of Christ. Because we're in Christ, we now are full of the love of God by the Holy Spirit. We receive that, Jesus. We receive it. In Jesus' name. Now, take the love of God and go give it away. You can give it away here. You can take it out the door. You can do as, as, as we were hearing today from all of our evangelists. We can take it out and give it to someone else.